everyone. Welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. My name's Marla and I'm with Matt about cards and crafts and today I'm sharing an encouragement card featuring the known and loved stamps, dies, and stencil from Pink Fresh Studio. This stamp set is amazing. There are very few stamp sets that I think really are packed full of great encouragement and this is the one that I would highly recommend to anybody. There are sentiments that say you are never alone, you are known and loved, significant, brave, generous, beautiful, worthy, my friend. It is just filled with some sentiments that can be for any occasion where somebody needs a little bit of uplifting. I'm also going to be using the ornate banner. I'll be using the middle die. This is a slimline die also from Pink Fresh Studio. You Are Amazing is a stamp and stencil set. I'm using that large leaf stencil. Stamp. I'm not using the stencil today. From Pink Fresh Studio, the inks I'm using are Grassy Knoll, Slumber, and Blue Jay. I'm using those jewels from Pink Fresh Studio, some art glitter glue. These are glow in the dark. Nouveau drops. I didn't use them for the glow in the dark aspect. I used them because they coordinated very well with the grassy knoll. And we're going to do some heat embossing, so I need to use some Versamark ink. I have a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock in my Misty. That cardstock's about four and a quarter by five and a half, but I am going to use that coordinating wreath die to cut out my wreath. As I said, we're doing heat embossing, so my heat emboss, my heat tool is over to the left, and I have been heating it up while I was doing my stamping. Here I'm using some Gina K Designs champagne embossing powder. Unfortunately, this embossing powder, even though it's my favorite, uh, has been discontinued. A gold would work just as nicely. So there are lots of beautiful gold embossing powders out there that would be fabulous for this project. I decided that I really wanted to create an elegant look on this card. I love the way that Pink Fresh Studio has added the stencils to their collection. It makes creating cards quick and easy. I did use this stencil previously, so I used it one other time. It took me a minute to figure out how to align them. I didn't think about the fact that when you take the wreath out of the stamp set, that the orientation is not going to be perfect to the stencils. So I didn't realize I was trying to line it up using the marks at the bottom of the stencil and that wasn't working for me. So I, as you can see, I did find the two flowers on the bottom and that's what I used as my orientation so I am a little cattywampus but my stencil is lining up and once I figured out what points I wanted to use to match up my stencil then it was really quick and easy. So the first layer was using slumber which again is a pink fresh studio blue and this is my all-time favorite blue ink of any other company. Pink Fresh did the blues perfect, and this Blue Jay is just an amazing color. So I am going to bring in the third layer, which is going to be for the leaves, and I lined that up. And then the third and fourth, or fourth and fifth layer, I chose not to use those. So the fourth layer will add a little bit of accent to the flower, and then the fifth layer adds an accent to the leaves. So so you could use a darker blue to get those little accents on your flowers and then you could use a darker green and get a little bit more accent on that. But because I did the heat embossing, I felt that this was a uh, perfect. I didn't want to add any more to it. As you can see, I did line up my die, which is the coordinating die, as I said, for the wreath, and it does cut out the center. Here is a happy accident, and I want to preface this stamping with embrace the imperfections. So this stamp is too large for my Misty, and I decided to pull out my Tim Holtz platform, but I do not press this hard enough and I don't get a great impression. For me, it turned out to be a happy accident 
Normally, I would want that perfect, crisp stamping, but when I looked at it, it looked very vintage, very worn, and I liked the look of it. So I decided to go ahead and embrace it. I brought in that ornate, ornate banner die. As I said, I used the middle size, and I went with this imperfect panel. As I said, this does come with a stencil set, but I chose not to use this. I am going to share a piece of green cardstock. Initially, I matched up the grassy knoll with a piece of uh, green cardstock that I had in my stash right there. And eventually, I'm going to change this because I want something that's a little bit softer. Hero Arts has some. Pa uh, paper. It's called Lapis. It's one of my favorite blues, and I'm going to bring that in for my card base instead. But now I'm adding some foam dimension to the back of that wreath because I do want to pop that up. I'm going to leave the release paper on for now, and we're going to do a little more heat embossing. This is the Lapis paper, and this is what made me decide to change. I knew I wanted to bring in a little bit of blue because of the blue flowers, so my sentiment's going to be on that that blue lapis paper and I'm going to do some more heat embossing. I'm using some of the stronger sentiments. So I'm using you are strong and you are brave. I'm going to ink these up with my Versamark ink once I get them straight and then I'll come in with my second set that's going to say you are strong. So I'm stamping from the bottom up and then I'll use my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer and I'm going to trim this down. So I'm going to leave about an eighth of an inch border between the edge of my square and the words. And then I'm going to incorporate that green paper that I liked, but I thought was just a little bit too bright for the card that I wanted to create. And I'm going to off camera cut another piece that's going to be about an eighth of an inch. And I do that. I eyeball this. I just eye it. I am not much of a measurer. Even if I do try to measure, I never get anything straight. So I do the best that I can. I embrace my imperfections. I know what my strengths are. Cutting straight, I always say that I must have failed cutting in preschool because it is definitely not my strong suit. You will not see me fussy cutting very often because I'm not good at it. So I will uh, mount that blue onto the green piece of cardstock and all of my pieces are going to be cut out to finish my card just for the sake of time. So once I get this heat embossed, I'll bring in that guillotine trimmer. If you haven't subscribed to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel, we would absolutely love for you to subscribe. Make sure that you ring the bell so that you're notified whenever we do upload a video. And there are, we have an amazing design team. I don't know if you have followed the channel for a long time, but the group that came before us was amazing. And then I feel like we have another group of just crazy, talented um, creators that have really made some fantastic projects. So you don't want to miss that. Here I have created that bow using Pink Fresh Studios artistic bows. I was showing you that I uh, it comes in a double bow and I cut it out using some glitter paper. Then I used a pen to kind of form the bow. And that bow is, uh, you know, it just softens the paper so that it makes folding it over easier. And then I cut the bow in half, and that's how I get the two pieces of the bow. Here I did miss a spot, and so I took my Dove blender pen and I colored it in using that slumber. And then I have some thread. This is just some gold thread from my stash, and I've wound it up a couple of times, and I'm going to create a hanger for my wreath. Even though I do have that dimensional tape on the back of this, I am going to give it that feel that it's hanging maybe from the top of a door or something. So I'm going to tape this down on the back and eventually I am going to have to remove the tape because I do end up pulling it up just a little bit too high. I didn't like the spacing between the top of the card and the bow and the wreath, so I will redo that. 
and readjust that. And once I get it adjusted where I want it to go, then we're going to start gluing everything down. So I'll remove the release paper from the back of my wreath. I will make sure that it's straight the first time I don't get it straight. So I will lift it up a little bit and straighten it out. And then I will add some very small, because I'm out of foam squares, uh, to, to the back of the sentiment as well so that that sentiment is popped up too. I really like these foam squares. They're super easy to use. I have some foam tape. Uh, one of those big giant rolls. And I sometimes have a problem with the release paper, but with these foam squares, they're fabulous. They're so easy to use. I like the dimension that I get with it. And the release paper um, is so much easier than my other release tape or my other dimensional tape, sorry, that I have. So I'm going to fluff my bow a little bit. Now I have to use my reverse tweezers because if you've ever worked with glitter paper, it doesn't stick to anything. I don't have any glue dots and glue dots may have worked a little bit better, but I just leave my reverse tweezers on there for about five minutes and I let that dry. As you can see, that is a scrap piece of paper. Whenever I can use scraps, I do try to. I try to use up what I have and I don't throw a whole lot away. I mean, if they're tiny scraps, I'll throw them away, but I do try to keep the scraps uh, that are usable and reuse them. So I'm gonna place this on, and then I'm gonna use the art glitter glue, and I am going to glue the banner to the top of my card base. And as you can see, I did bring in that lapis blue card base. And I'm going to leave maybe about an eighth of an inch at the very top. So there is going to be, I'm not lining it all the way up to the very top. I'm leaving it about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. So you still see that blue a little bit. And then I'll set that aside to dry. I am really bad about being able to flip over these little jewels, jewels of any kind, anything that has a flat back and dimension on the top, I have a hard time flipping them over. So to save you the torture of watching me trying to get those out of the jar and flip them over, I decided to go ahead and just place them where I wanted them. And then I'm just showing you that I'm gluing them down. And then I'm going to bring in those glow in the dark drops and I'm going to add some dots to the center of my flowers. I always make sure that it's flowing well. I get Hers Hershey Kisses, those little drops at strings at the top of my um, glued of my dots every once in a while. And to combat that, I use the end of my jewel picker and I kind of swirl them. Uh, Nuvo drops are very forgiving in the first few minutes, so it's not going to leave any lines in your glue drops, in your dew drops, and that is going to be my card for today. I'm going to show you another card that I've created using this same known and loved wreath. I am going to be creating that. Uh, the process video will be available on my channel, Mad About Cards and Crafts on a Saturday. So if you haven't headed over to my channel, I would love for you to head over and take a look at my channel as well. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thank you.